arahato sama sambuddha sa. Okay, good. Now we're going to take the right hand, curl the first two fingers, and if, this is assuming your hands are clean. Take the right thumb, block the right nostril, and inhale through the left. Pinch and retain, both nostrils, retain the breath. Release the right nostril, exhale through the right nostril. Extending the exhale. Inhale deeply through the right nostril. Pinch both nostrils, retain the breath. Exhale out the left nostril. Inhale through the left. Pinch both nostrils and retain. Exhale out the right. Inhale through the right. Pinch and retain the breath. Exhale out the left. Okay, good, and release. All right, now we're gonna inhale the arms up like so. Now retain the breath and bring the arms out to the side. Now we're still retaining the breath and now start to exhale and we're gonna fold the hands towards each other such that they meet at the sternum and we're exhaling, extending the exhale, moving such like we're moving through syrup. Inhale. Retain the breath, bring the arms out to the side. Retaining, now start exhaling, and we're gonna extend the exhale. And imagine that you're moving your hands and arms through syrup that induces both mindfulness and concentration. Okay, inhale again. Retain the breath, bring the arms out to the side. Start exhaling, moving the hands towards one another, such that they meet in front of the sternum, extending the exhale, which forces relaxation. Good, all right, inhale the arms up again. Now pivot your torso to your right. Your torso to your right, bring the arms down, look over the right shoulder, retaining the breath. Exhaling, coming back to center. Inhale the arms up again. Retain the breath, pivot to your left, to your left, lower the arms, look over your left shoulder, retaining the breath. Exhale, coming back to center. All right, good, inhale the arms up again. Interlace the fingers, bring them down to the head, and now go over to your right side, to your right side, retaining the breath, deep stretch in the left side body. Uh, 
exhale, coming back to center, exhaling more, dropping down the hands into the lap, and inhale the arms up again. Interlace the fingers, bring the hands down to the head, retain the breath, and go over to your left side, your left side, deep stretch in the right side body. Exhale, coming back to center. Okay, good. Okay, now we're gonna come into the formal practice, but let me get all set up. One moment. <clears throat> okay, good. So now, stretching up. And everything's settling in. We're going to take a tour of the senses to further sensitize ourselves to peripheral awareness and really to understand that there's no such thing as a distraction to the meditation. Everything can be rolled into the practice. Okay, so open up the eyes. And then just let everything come in as it is, with this quality of friendliness and openness. So let's experiment around with the visual practice, rather the visual sensecape. So look at something very particular and know it conceptually. I'm looking at the W key on my keyboard. And so notice how you're knowing it conceptually. There's a very kind of narrow focus. This is attention. And now relax the eyelids, relax the muscles of the eyes and let everything go broad. And this is similar to open awareness. There's just this open, taking everything in. And notice how if you're open to everything, the concepts don't arise. There's this kind of unconditional, non-conceptual receptivity. And already this is the merger of metta and open awareness. It's taking things in just as it is. So we'll close the eyes. Now bring your attention to the inner visual screen. And again, we're gonna approach this with this quality of metta. Now there might be images that arise. You might need to back off the practice just a bit, loosen things up just a bit, such that mental images arise, image thoughts. And now notice how they arise out of nothing or arise out of open awareness. They're made of nothing, or you could say they're made of open awareness, and they recede back into open awareness. So now again, pay attention to a particular image thought that's arising. And again, take it in with friendliness. But now look at the whole context, the entirety of the mental screen it is actually boundless. And take that in also 
with friendliness, receptivity. Now drop that and then bring your attention to what Shenzhen would call here out, so the external auditory experience. So you notice certain auditory events. Also notice how they all arise on their own. There's nothing for you to do outside of just take them in with kindness. And now tap into the broadness of your external auditory experience. Notice how there are no boundaries. Notice also how you're not clearly on this side of the experience and the experience is on the other. Notice how if you're actually paying attention, it's just this one thing. And how everything collapses into that point. Okay, we can drop that. And now bring your attention to internal talk. So auditory thinking. You might have to back off the practice a bit so that the auditory thoughts arise so that they can be observed. We're just taking it all in with friendliness. And any internal auditory event just arises out of awareness, is made of awareness and recedes back into awareness. And in a sense, nothing ever happens. Everything's totally still and silent. Now take a deep breath and feel the whole body all at once. And exhale, feeling the whole body exhale all at once. Good, now bring your attention to the feet. So we're kind of receiving any sensory events in the feet the same quality of friendliness and welcoming. It's like, it's like greeting a friend you haven't seen in 10 years. now 
bring your feet to your calves or your lower legs. Receiving whatever's happening with this attentive, curious, friendliness. And now feeling the thighs. Now feeling the hips. This quality of everything that, that you're experiencing now is known to you, familiar, and like, like family. Like nothing's apart from you. Feeling the lower abdomen rising and falling. And there's just this quality of sweet receptivity. now bring your attention to the chest, expansion, contraction. And now the shoulders and upper back. There might be tension in this area. If so, you can just try to release that. If it doesn't release, that's also not a problem. You just try to make peace with it the best we can. And now feeling the upper arms. Feeling the lower arms. rather the forearms.
not feeling the hands. You're now feeling the neck, face and head. And with this quality of openness, friendliness. Now take a deep breath and feel the whole body all at once. Exhale, feeling the whole body all at once. Now see if you can hold your attention on the entirety of the body. Noticing how it's just doing its thing. Maybe this quality of just open receptivity to it all, friendliness. Okay, so we'll drop that. And now bring your attention to in motion. So you're going to be, this is different from a mental state. These are more kind of bodily emotional activations. You might feel it in the chest, the throat, the head, the front of the body, the shoulders, the stomach. Now I'm just letting all that go. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get into the primary practice of metta. And like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna do a very traditional form of metta. Going through easy to love, an easy to love one, teacher, self, and so on. And what I'd really like for you to pay attention to is metta mind. So notice the mental state of metta arising. That's what we really want to get sensitized to. And going through all these, these kind of complicated iterations will help, help, help us find that. Although there is standalone benefit to doing the more complex and we'll call it more uh, cognitively engaged meta because it helps infuse meta into your see here and seal experience so okay good so now firstly smile and then feel the smile in the whole body I think Mantok Chia talks about smiling with the body. We were smiling with the face, and we're smiling with the body. And now think of an easy to love object. This might be a child, might be a pet, someone you have a very uncomplicated relationship with. So you see this person or animal, you're looking them in the eyes and they're looking back at you. And there's this quality of love, receptivity. 
And it's completely natural and uncontrived. Naturally, you're open to this. You love this person or pet. And now notice the mental state of metta. Okay, good. Now just keep sustaining the practice. And throughout the whole day, whenever you get thrown off, come back to this. You can use a verbalization like, may you be happy, may you be happy, or whichever verbalization works for you. Engaging the visualization part and also engaging the somatic and affective part. So you're feeling this love and bliss in the body. You're feeling it in the emotional state, the mental state. Okay, so now we'll move on to a mentor, a teacher, someone who selflessly, generously taught you, guided you in such a way that was very um, altruistic. They, you knew that they were concerned with your benefit. So bring that person to mind. If you don't have somebody like that, you can just fabricate one out of your imagination. They're looking that person in the eyes. They're looking back at you. You can use the mantra, oh, may you be happy. May you be happy. May all go well for you. And that wish is reciprocated back to you. That's exactly what they want for you. You feel that. You're smiling, you're feeling the smile in the body. You're seeing your beloved teacher. The two of you are looking each other in the eyes. There's this reciprocated loving kindness, friendliness, and total receptivity. Like notice how receptive you are, how you take, you take it in because it's so pleasurable and wonderful. You really feel that. And now we're gonna do metta towards the self. I always struggled with metta towards self. I, I just never got it. 
but what really worked for me was splitting myself into an adult me and a child me and then wishing Manta for the child me. So if you like, you can go ahead and do that. So you see yourself maybe somewhere between the ages of two and six years of age. And just to take this image in brings a big smile to your face. And a smile in the body. And you wish for yourself that you'd be happy. May you be happy. May you be happy. May you be happy. It's so sincere and natural. To be clear, this is all you've ever wanted. You just want happiness. May you be happy. Now we're gonna to go to a loved one. So think of a loved one in your life. You see them, you look in their eyes. You want them to be happy. You can use your verbalization or your mantra, may you be happy, may you be happy, or any other one you want. You see them and then you feel the practice in the body and in the mind. This wish for happiness is reciprocal. You want them to be happy and they want you to be happy. You notice the total receptivity, friendliness, kind of non-conceptual curiosity, wonder. Now we'll move on to another loved one. Smiling, seeing the person there smiling back at you. There's quality of love, receptivity. Good. Now we're going to go to a neutral person. This is very important. This really helps us develop unconditional 
metta. To experience metta is in many ways to be happy. And we want it to not, we want this happiness not to be conditional. We don't only want to be happy when we see loved ones, we want to also be happy when we see neutral people, people we don't know. So, okay, think of this neutral person. Maybe it's the postman or a clerk or even somebody on the news. Like a, a somebody that runs in your neighborhood. Do the same exercise with them. And you have a neutral view on this person. You might not know them well, but then paradoxically, in meta mind, everything is, everyone is intimately known to you. There's a total receptivity. And now we'll go to the enemy. So think of your enemy. And they maybe did some things to you that weren't kind. And we're not denying the hurt around that. But they, like all beings, just want to be happy. And we'll see if we can fabricate this desire for them to be happy. And this is just an experiment. We don't know. We're just going to try. So go ahead and smile. And then you see your enemy smiling sweetly in a kind, sincere way. And then start wishing them well. After all, all that they want is happiness. And maybe they've gone about it in a kind of stupid way that hurt you. And that's regrettable, but that's all they, they want. They just want happiness. And you understand that because you're the same. Good. Now we're going to do this geographic version of metta. So firstly, we wish happiness for ourselves. May I be happy. Go ahead and smile. Really feel that. And of course you do. You just want to be happy. It's all you've ever wanted. May I be happy. Now may all beings in this room be happy.
Now may all beings in this building be happy. So you feel the mental state of metta. You know it. And then you're feeling it expand at every step. Now, may all beings in the city be happy. And may all beings in this state or province be happy. Now may all beings in this country be happy. Now may all beings in this world be happy. And now may all beings throughout space and time be happy. You're feeling the, you're in the mental state of metta, metta mind. And it's totally expanded. Total openness, boundlessness. Okay, so we'll start wrapping up the meditation, but before we do, now look at the mind itself, noticing the open, friendly receptivity, open awareness, the natural state. Okay, good. So check the schedule. So we'll take a five minute break. So we'll start at 11.05 with an hour of yoga. So see you all in five minutes. And uh, we, can, we can also make some time, maybe, uh, maybe right before yoga if there's any questions. So feel free to write them in the chat or just know what they are. 